It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, I'm uh, going to talk today about uh, an idea that I've been kind of dreaming about for a long time, but I think is actually becoming possible to implement. Um, and uh, it's actually a dream a lot of different people have had. How many of you uh, read Diamond Age by Neil Stevens? Okay, you know the young ladies illustrator primer. It's the same dream. Um, and actually, Vannevar Bush had it in the 1950s. But you know, the idea is that you know, we ought to be able to learn anything we want and have something that helps guide us through that. So um, let me uh, begin by just uh, giving you uh, sort of, so the, so the rough idea of what we're going to try to do is to figure out a way. We've got all kinds of different people that have all kinds of different knowledge in the world. And now we have all kinds of resources that teach you almost anything. I mean, there's a YouTube video that tells you how to solve almost any problem you run into in normal life. There's a MIT or a Stanford video telling you, you know, any obscure technical course that you want. Um, there's online materials for anything from, you know, learning to spell up to learning general relativity. All that material's out there. How do you find the right thing for the right person at the right time? Is that even possible? Well, I know it's possible um, because when I was in fourth grade, I had this amazing librarian named Mrs. Wilner. And, and my image of this sort of comes from how Mrs. Wilner acts. So I'll first describe this kind of how it looks to a fourth grader. And then hopefully by the end of it, you'll see it's actually a much more general sort of idea. But let me describe Mrs. Wilner. She, she was somebody who got to know every kid that came into the library. And I would usually go, at that time I was obsessed with rock collecting, and I would go and always ask for books on rocks. And she would find me the books on rocks, but then she would also bring back a couple of other books that she thought I might be interested in too. So she got me my first book on electricity. And so I started looking at that. Well, I didn't ask for a book on electricity. Yeah, but you, know, you, you would understand this book. You would like this book. Um, she bought me my first science fiction book, actually, a book called The Wonderful Trip to the Mushroom Planet. And sort of stuck it in there. And, you know, it's about a kid that builds a rocket ship. And I, I think of that today when I actually um, am, am, am working on building a, a rocket ship. And, you know, I'm actually getting to do some of that kinds of, those kinds of things. And so I realized, I looked back, and I realized a lot of my life was actually really strongly influenced by Mrs. Wilner getting to know me and knowing just what the right piece of, she didn't write the books. In a sense, she wasn't a conventional teacher. She didn't do the teaching. But she did this brilliant thing of knowing exactly where I was and what I was interested in and bringing me the right material at the right time. So... That's what we would really like to have um, with all the material that's out there on the web. So the way that she did this is she kind of had knowledge about three different things. First of all, she had a lot of knowledge about me, kids in general, but me specifically, what I know, what, you know, what kind of material would, was likely to interest me. She had a way of kind of assessing. You know, she would ask me questions about, do I know about this, do I have that? And she also was familiar with the materials that were in the library. So today, I think that one of the problems is that most online learning material sort of bundles that model of the student in with the material. So it's, like a, it's sort of like a textbook. It has an assumption about what the person who's reading it knows. It has maybe the assessment materials that are built in there that kind of assess more did you read the material than uh, in, you know, or, you know, did you get the concept before you go into the next concept? And o online materials, textbooks tend to have all of this stuff kind of bundled as, as one thing. So we need to unbundle it first. And to unbundle it, we need something that sort of ties it all together. So imagine that there was a kind of a data structure. And I'm imagining this data structure is out there on the web. It has an API going to it. And it has represented in it everything that there is to know. Now, of course, we can't just write such a, but it, obviously, this has to be a collaborative object. But it has a node for everything there is to know from, let's say, something as simple as uh, how to carry the one when you're doing addition, um, how to change the oil on a 55 Chevy, 
you know, uh, how to uh, connect to the, uh, the API for Freebase. <laughs> You know, it, it has every, any, any teachable skill, any teachable accessible skill, it has a node in there for it, and it shows its relationship to other skills. Then, also out there, is a bunch of material that teaches skills, and that material has assumptions about what you already know and what it's going to teach you. So it has pointers into that map. So it's tagged in a way that it knows what the prerequisites are, and it knows where it's going to take you. In some place, you have a model of each student or each of us that says, what do we already know in that space? What do we want to know? What kind of styles of material do we like? And then finally, there's something that helps us assess and figure out, well, what is there to know? How much of it do I know? So that's the kind of uh, system that I think we will evolve to. And I'd like to talk to you today about some steps that I think we're doing to evolve to it and some ways that you can help us get there. So right now, there are already people beginning to map knowledge of school knowledge. This is taken from something called the Common Core, which is a map of knowledge that elementary school students need in math and language skills for the first kind of K through 12. And it's been very, very carefully mapped and designed and agreed upon. And actually, school districts use this. Um, many states have adopted this as a standard. And there's a structure to it. So that's an example of competencies. But imagine that not just for kind of arithmetic skills and language skills, but imagine that for every possible skill that you have. Imagine that we've built some kind of a structure like that. And it may have formal parts like this that are blessed by school districts. And it may have informal parts that you know, are handled by different communities. Um, but there's a kind of specific map of the detail things that there are to know, the competencies that there are to know. Now, let's, let's talk about how this would look to me, how I would have liked to have seen this as a fourth grader. So I don't know about you, but every school year was kind of a mystery. You know, they hand you these big texts, you sit there, and they teach you stuff for a while. You have no idea where you're heading, why they're teaching it to you, how far you are through it, anything like that. So here's what I would have liked to have had as a fourth grader. So I wish that in the beginning they would have handed me a map and I can imagine it's kind of a treasure map, and you know, maybe this is the next few weeks we're going through, but I see all the other stuff to be learned in the background. And if I want, I can explore through that map and find out what those things are. I can just kind of know that they exist and hear about their names and, and so on. And I can kind of see you know, over maybe the next semester what I'm going to do. And then as I actually do those things and I learn those things, what I'd like to do is I would like to see my progress show up. And so that I have some sense that I'm making progress as I go through and I, uh, and I actually learn the things. Now, I might find that you know, maybe I didn't learn something quite so well. And so as I go on, maybe I leave behind a patch of, I'd like to see that. And maybe I can go back later and I've got it and I have that sense that I got that. Or maybe I go out and I've, I actually learned something that is far off the beaten path. You know, but, I would have loved to have seen that, just some picture of where are we in this world and you know, so how much of it I've done and wh what is fourth grade supposed to be. Well, that's actually what I want today. I mean, I wish that I could make a map of my ignorance. So when I, when I learn about a new field, you know, I, I go in that field, I have no idea what is it that I don't know. I wish somebody would just show me a map and say, hey, here's the little bits that you know, here's the stuff that is to be known. And you know, I could kind of explore there and see some kind of a map like that. So I want the grown-up version of that map, but I want to give kids the kid version of this map, too. So also, another thing to know about me, I won't dwell on this too much, is I happen to like look at things very abstractly. I like the theory of how it works. But I work with kids. Uh, I've worked with kids that you know, they, what they really want to see is a picture. And there are other people who, you know, what they want to hear is a story about how it works. There are other people who are much more sort of facts, you know, tell me the, you know, the, the, different, the different ways of learning and different things that different kinds of kids grab a hold of, the learning style. So an important thing in the model has to be what kind of material works for me. I won't dwell on that too much. But um, what we need to do is make the... Um, elect how, do we, how do we make the electronic version of this? Well, we have some data representation that basically represents 
what's in that learning map, the huge learning map. And we have some model of the student, and the model of the student sort of has two components. One component is sort of the coloring on that map. How much of the, the map does the student understand, and to what degree do they understand it? Is it a soft understanding, or do they really have a solid understanding of it? I mean, I think red, green, yellow might be enough for that. But just a, a general sense that sort of helps you say, do they have the prerequisites for this material? We have to have the learning resources somehow labeled, and those learning resources also refer back to the map. That they assume you know this, and that they teach you this. And then finally, maybe one of the most difficult ways is we need a way when you go into a field, if I, if I want to learn um, general relativity, you know, show me a map of general relativity. I, I don't know, you know what, what do I know, what do I not know there? I want some tool that kind of helps assess it and like, gets me started to say, okay, well, you already know these concepts, but you have no clue about these concepts even exist. And, and so we need some kind of assessment tools. And of course, there's infinite numbers of those. So what, what I'd really like to see is I'd like to see something out on the web where, so that basically apps can talk to these, to these models. And so you could make the, the Neil Stevenson's Young Ladies Illustrated Primer I think it's becoming a very plausible thing today. Not because it's an artificial intelligence that t actually teaches you, but it's more like Mrs. Wilner. It has enough of a model of you to find the right stuff and present it to you. And there are huge numbers of people that are out there creating great stuff all the time. Interactive stuff, videos, text, all kinds of it. There's, and right now, if you're a great teacher and you have a great way of teaching things, you have a marketing problem. It's really hard if you have the very, very best way of you know, factoring fractions. You know, that may make you a star in your local high school for one day, but there's no way to share that out to the world that's very effective. I mean, even if you build it online, you know, the chances that everybody's going to go there when they get to that are almost zero. So if you could solve that marketing problem for all the people who have something to teach, and help connect them to all the people who want something to learn, then people could build all kinds of apps that navigate through that space. And the key thing is just getting the data structure up there. So here's the technical architecture that I think is going to make this work. That first of all, there are open source servers that serve up that information. So we have to establish a set of standards. How do you actually represent this learning map? How do you represent a competency? How do you label the information? So there's a set of standards, and then there is some software that needs to exist, which, of course, needs to be open source software that actually serves up these learning maps. And I'm assuming that these learning maps exist in a completely open way so that they can be duplicated and copied and served up on multiple servers and so on. And then we need a way of tagging the resources that are out there. That for, for teaching. Now, it turns out that the Gates Foundation is actually um, paying for many of the parts of this vision and you know, has people who um, it is supporting to build uh, different pieces of this, including Applied Minds, is building sort of an initial reference uh, implementation of those open source servers. And the Learning Research Metadata Initiative is, is a group to establish the standards for tagging the data. And we're having our input on that in such a way that it will reference the learning map. Assessment is still an unsolved problem, but something like LRMI is going to have to exist for assessment, too. That's a tougher problem. But I think it's actually beginning to come together. And if you're interested in participating in this, you know, please contact me or talk to uh, there's some people around here from the Gates Foundation, or talk to Kurt Bullock, who is talking uh, later, later today. He's another person that's working on this. Um, but it's really being built today, and of course it will take you know, decades to, to really get built to the point where um, it really solve, uh, solves our problem. But I'm actually looking forward to using this. So thank you very much.